welcome to today's session for our Revit, uh, Revit starter series. Today, we're going to be having a look at collaboration. Again, for anyone who's new to the series, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Matt Calloway, one of the application engineers here at Man Machine. We've done a few of these videos now, a few of these sessions. This seems to be the last one in the series. It's been uh, We've been going for a good part of the year so far. If you want to catch up with any of the previous sessions, they are all recorded and they are all available on the Mana Machine website and on the Mana Machine YouTube channel. Once you're there, don't forget to check out the other videos and the lots that you are available to watch. So let's jump straight into it. So today we're going to have a look at collaboration. So we're going to look at working with Revit and the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Now, we've kind of already touched on the Construction Cloud in a previous episode towards the beginning. I have had a look at starting up a new project on the Construction Cloud, uh, setting up folders and saving our projects onto there, uh, and just working uh, with our Revit projects in the cloud. So I'm not going to go over the, the basics today, but we're going to have a look at a, um, an add-on to the Construction Cloud um, called Collaborate and Collaborate Pro. If we get time uh, for the fabric but so first of all looking on my reddit home screen at my recent model you can see we've got two here that have a little cloud icon um, on the thumbnail pictures there this denotes that these files are saved onto the cloud and not locally on my network so i've kind of already pre-saved these um onto a um a production cloud project that i've created especially for today if I want to open up these, of course, I can click on the, the recent files here, but I can also go to the Autodesk Docs option in the bottom left-hand corner, where I can navigate any project that I have access to on the cloud, and uh, build into the folders, and open up the file uh, directly from there. Save time, I'm just going to open it up from the thumbnails. So I have two files that we're going to use today. I have an architectural model and a structural model. These are the files that come pre-installed with Revit, so you can access these through any uh, Revit installation uh, yourself. So we'll start off with the architect mode. So I'm just going to give that a left click. Revit's going to download and open the file from the construction file. We'll, we'll have a look on the construction file side of things in a, uh, in a moment. Okay, here we are. We're inside our Revit version. We'll just jump into the, uh, the default preview view here. So ultimately, what we want to do is linking the structured model, which if you're familiar with Revit, you might have seen before, but we're going to do this with the cloud models. So I'm going to kind of play this on two angles. The main angle is as the architect, we want to link in the structural model. And should the structural team, there could be another uh, department within the same organization, they could be a completely different company. If they make a change to their model, there's going to be certain things that we want to be aware of. So using the construction cloud, we can link in the structured model. We can set up um, monitoring between the two models. And then should the structural team make a change uh, within their model, the next time we open up our architectural project, Revit should prompt us about the changes and we can then make a decision um, on what to do there. So we'll, we'll have a look at doing that. So we're going to have to play it from both sides. We'll have to jump in as the uh, structural team and we'll make some changes as well. Uh, and then we'll kind of switch back to being uh, the architects. So as mentioned, these are being pre-saved onto the, onto the cloud, just to save us a little bit of time. If you're not familiar with saving to the cloud, if you do have access to a, uh, an RCS construction cloud project, all we need to do is go to file, then you'll save as, you've got the option for cloud uh, model at the top there, and that will allow you to save onto the, onto the construction cloud. Great out at the moment, because this is already uh, saved. So, Let's have a look on the construction file side of things. So let me just drag my web browser on my screen on the left that you can't see to the one that you can see here. So if you've been following the series, this will look a little uh, familiar. We're on the construction cloud, and we're currently looking at docs, which is the foundation uh, for your project. In here, we can set up a folder structure, um, and we can save um, our Revit projects into here, mods, other file types as well. I've just set up the folder structure uh, for the areas that I kind of want to cover off today. 
So we have this work in progress folder and we can see the two folders that are set up for the, the two teams. We have the architecture team and our structural team here. I can see both folders, but as a project administrator, you can just limit the access of the architect and form to the people that are in the architectural team um, in the structures folder for the structural team. So you just see the files and folders uh, that are relevant to the cell. If I have a look in the architecture folder, I can see the file that we've just spoken here. We also have this consume folder, and I'll kind of cover that off in a second. At the moment, that's empty. If I click into there, there's no files in there. And the same setup is there for the, the structures team as well. You can see the structural model saved in there. And we have this consume model. So as the structural team, I produce this Revit model and I'm ready to share this with the architect. So instead of firing it by email or uploading onto some other location or anything like that, we're going to use the, uh, the Collaborate plugin. I just go to the top left hand corner where we have dots here and click on it. I now have access to this design collaboration. If I just click on there, and we'll just switch to that module. So we're coming out of the dot side of this project. We're going into the design collaboration part of this project. And I've kind of come in here and I've, I've preset this up a little bit for us for the demonstration today. But essentially what we have at the top is this little tab with three little dots. If I click on that, these swim lanes will appear. At the moment, I can switch between being the architect and being the structures team. So what we can kind of do is when we're ready or at a point where we want to share our model with the right wider group, we can publish that model on here. Other teams can then choose whether to consume that file. You can just choose the ones that you want to consume. If you're not interested in downloading the latest structures model or MEP or let's go or ventilation model, you don't have to download um, those files to your, your team's folder. But today we're going to produce um, a new structural package, um, including the structural model. And then as the architect team, we're going to consume that. And then we're going to look at that with our project. So first of all, let's click on structures. So we're now the structural team here. And I won't go into a lot of detail on these swim lanes here. Um, if you want further information on these swim lanes, I think we are a little limited on uh, time and, and how design collaborate works all together. And um, also they have to be really good at keeping their, their help page for all this uh, up to date. There's a little uh, circle and a question mark in the top right hand corner. Uh, you may or may not have seen this uh, before. If we just click on there and go to the main help page, it'll open up on the relevant page for the, the screen that you're currently looking at. And we can get more information uh, about what's going on here. Because as you can see, there's a variety of icons here um, that you'll need to um, understand. If I just go to the menu on the left hand side, we have timeline and packages. And if I expand that and click on packages, we can get more information as to what the the different type of packages uh, mean here. So let's go to that from now. So let's create ourselves a new package. So on our structures swim lane on the far right hand side, we have this little plus button in a circle. I'm going to click on that and we're going to create ourselves a new package. We want to include our Revit models so on the left hand side. I'm going to expand models and I'm going to tick our Revit project there to add that. To this package. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to share this package. And this will allow all the other disciplines, all the other teams to see this package and any files that I've added. In this case, it's just the Revit model, but you can add other file types in there as well. When I hit the share button, we can give the package a name. Uh, we're on the 14th today, so I don't know, structures. Uh, December, just a full thing in there, and I can uh, add a description if I want to. And I can hit the share button. And that's our package created. If I go back to our swim lanes now, 
we can see that on this timeline, we have a new package that we've created, and this is being shared. So you can choose when to share it. You don't have to share it instantly. We have them, but you can start to build up the package and then hit the share to the credit. Now let's switch to looking at this from the architecture's team's point of view. Only click on the architecture on the left hand side here. As an architect, I can look at the structure's swim lane and I can see a hollow circle, a white circle, on the far right hand side of the structure's timeline there. So that tells me there's a new package available. If it's white inside the circle, it means we've not yet consumed that. And if it goes solid, it means we have consumed it. I'm going to click on this package and I can choose to consume this. And what that's going to do is it's going to take this structures model and as we saw in docs we have that consumed folder and it's going to place a copy of this project in there i can link that copy into my revit project and then as the structured structures team releases new updates of their models at, at set times we can just consume those packages and it'll just update that file in our consumed folder um, and then the next time we open up our technical project We'll see the latest changes as we consume uh, new files. Let's hit the consume button and consume again. Yeah, so this is now consuming the model. We can see the icons changed. It's gone into a purple, a solid purple circle. So we should now have access to that copy of the structural model in our docs folder. So let's switch back to docs. Yeah. So if we go back into our work in progress folder and we have a look at our architecture folder and we go into our consumer folder, we can now see there's a, a folder in there for the structural model. Again, there might be multiple teams. We've only got the two here for the architecture structures, but there might be multiple teams. And we can go into that structural folder and we can now see uh, the latest structural projects in there. Now let's switch back to Revit and get that links in. Yeah, yeah, so fairly standard stuff on here. Again, we're going to use the desktop connector to link in the structures uh, model. Again, if you have a look back on the earlier episodes of the Revit series, I ran through um, dots and the desktop connector. So we can, can find more about that there. Uh, I'm just going to go to the insert tab, link Revit. Yeah, and then I just need to find um, our desktop connector. There we go, Autodesk Docs. Access the Mana Machine hook. Let's see if I can remember what the project was called. So it's 38,998. Somewhere around here. Yeah, so that's not the file I was expecting. Let's refresh that. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, I've just used the same number twice in it. I just need to refresh the screen because it's a new project. Okay, so uh, our collaboration project here. Let's jump into that. We should find our folder structure just as we created it on the construction file. There's our project progress folder. Go in for the architectural team. So let's go to our architectures folder. Let's have a look at uh, files we've consumed. We have our structural file in there that we've consumed. Let's select that. We're just going to do internal origin to internal origin. It should line up nicely. Hopefully, let's see what happens. Click the open button. Revit's downloading the structural model that we've just consumed. Good thing about it there. Yeah, we'll ignore that. 
that message. And we now have the structural model that links into that power architectural model. As the structural team progress and publish new versions of their models, whenever we open up our Revit project, now it will just link those in. So what we're going to want to know is if certain things change in the structured model that affect us, we want Revit to prompt us. So we're going to start monitoring elements between these two projects. So first of all, we're going to change the view. We'll keep it simple for this episode. I'm conscious that it's fine as well. So let's jump into our south elevation view. And we'll, we'll just keep it simple and we'll work with levels. So on the right hand side, we can see the levels of this project. And right here, I'm going to left click on any one of these and I'm just going to grab a little grip on the end and I'm just going to move these levels a bit further out to the right hand side. Let's drag them to about there. You can see we now have two sets of levels. So one set is in our architectural model, and the other set is in the linked Revit file uh, from the structural team. Now, should any of these levels change or get renamed or anything like that, I want to know about it. Also, let's have a look. So, yeah, the carpet levels in our project as well. But yeah, we're going to monitor these. So what we're going to do is go to the Collaborate tab on the ribbon bar at the top. And we have this pop it monitor button here. Clicking on that, I can choose to copy monitor based on linked files. I'm going to click the select link button here. And then I just need to click on any element within the linked structural model and select it. And it takes us into this pop and monitor button. See what new tab now called pop and monitor. So it's a great tool, is this. Um, there's more than what I've got time for to, to show you with this particular tool. But for now, we're just going to monitor levels between the two projects. If we have a look on the rim bar, we do have a monitor button. Now, if there's something within the structural model that I wanted to also replicate in ours, maybe there's another level that they've added um, that doesn't exist in our project. We could use the copy button and we can select the level in the structured model and it would make a copy of that uh, within our project and automatically start monitoring uh, between those two components. But as we already have levels in our project, we're just going to establish a relationship between our levels and the structural model levels. So I'm going to click the monitor button here. So first of all, I'm going to click on our zero one entry level in our project. And then I can click on the zero one entry level within the structural model. And Revit's going to establish a relationship between those two components. If I just find the midpoint of the level lines, if we do go all the way across the project, it's a bit hard to see, but there's a little heartbeat icon here that's appeared. Always appears in the middle uh, of the element. So that's telling us that these two components are being monitored. Likewise, once I return back into the main project, should I ever select any elements that have been monitored, I can't be I will appear to let you know that that's a monitored uh, element. That's the first level done there. We'll do the same with level two, or floor two, or zero two four. And we'll do the same with zero three. And we'll do the same with roof. Now we have a parapet in our model, but the structured model doesn't. Uh, if we did this the other way around, as the structural team, we'd have been able to use the copy tool there. We could have clicked carpet level and it would have created a carpet level in the structured model. But we'll just leave it as, as that for now. I'm going to click the green finish tip button on the ribbon bar to confirm uh, the changes that we've just made there. And now should I select our zero one entry level, I can see that this is being uh, monitored. I'm going to hit the save button. We're going to save this model now that we're monitoring uh, the levels within the structures one, uh, model. We'll close this one down. We're going to open up the structures model as a web structural team, make some changes, and see what happens. Let's do a file and close. Right there. And we're going to open up the structures model. So we, we saw where that was saved in the structure folder on the uh, constructing file. So now where the structural engineers we're going to jump into the structures model. We're not just going to download here. Now, we're not going to see the architect model because the architects have not shared theirs and we've not 
link that in. So we're just going to continue working on this project uh, as normal as digital engineering. So let's jump into an elevation uh, view and we'll make a few changes. So first of all, let's change the height of the level. The roof, maybe the roof level is slightly wrong. We've just spotted that we made that mistake earlier or there's been um, um, a change uh, required for this project. Quickly 11,400, let's change that to 11,500. Small change, but will have a big effect on the project. So 11,500 for this elevation. Unless they will change without breaking anything, you might get a couple of warnings to stuff that are uh, on screen to the, the roof level. But there we go, it worked perfectly. So small change, but it'll have a big effect on the, on the model. Let's do some renaming as well. So a zero one ground uh, entry level. I'm going to call it ground, ground floor rather than entry level. Everything else seems to be floors. We've got zero two four, zero three four. Let's call this ground floor. So this time I'm going to select that particular level. We'll rename it directly through the uh, the main workspace rather than pop the window. We do have the option of either method. Let's call it ground floor. What it's asking us here is we do have views that are named after that level. So there is uh, a structural plan here for uh, the zero one entry level. Its name for this one is associated with the name of the level. We're just asking us that if we rename the level, do we also want to rename any corresponding view? Um, just to show you what happens, I'm going to click the yes button there. And we should see some views up there, uh, their name to match uh, within the program ground. I could have clicked no. Um, if I didn't want that to happen. We'll stick with those two changes for now. So let's save this project. So file save. That's going to save the changes back to the construction cloud. However, the way that the construction cloud works is uh, from the construction cloud, we're not going to quite see those changes directly in there. So we'll also have to publish um, our latest changes as well for docs to be able to see those changes. So I can continue working in this, I can save all day, um, every hour or so. Um, maybe at the end of the week or something like that, I might publish the changes that I've made um, on, on docs. So we can do that through um, Reddit. So the easiest way to do this is I'm just going to close this down. And we'll use um, the Autodesk docs um, option on the main phone screen here. So let's just switch to the the relevant projects. And again, let's see if I can remember the name. So it was 39,000, uh, sorry, 38,988 collaboration project. There we go. So it's our project files, working projects, where the structures team at the moment, they're all going to our structures folder. And there's our model. So even though we're saving to the cloud, it doesn't make the changes that we're making visible in dots. You might not yet want to see what's going on, particularly if you're, you're moving things around and you haven't quite got it to a point where you want people to be able to see those. So we just need to publish um, the latest save um, model here. I'm just going to put them with three dots on the right hand side and hit the publish latest button there and we'll publish that. Again, we have other videos on our YouTube channel that goes into uh, the construction cloud and the collaboration side of things in a lot more detail than what we can do in the, uh, the 30 minutes that we have here. So if you are interested in all this, do jump onto the YouTube channel and um, have a look at the videos that we have. We've got a good number of videos on this subject. So that's processing here. If I just go back to the um, docs window, let's just drag that back across. Then I can. We're not the architects, so let's get rid of that. Let's have a look at the structure folder. And we can see that um, we have our model here updating. So for anyone else, um, they can see that this, this file is in the process of publishing. It shouldn't take too long. Um, and we should be able to uh, do the rest of our stuff fairly uh, uh, promptly. Just to point out though, every time you publish, the version number will go up. At any time we can come here, and it might not let it go. There we go, it's just finished publishing. So I can go here and I can look at the previous versions that have been published. Again, another reason why you have to manually publish and um, 
fruits and not just publish every time you hit the save button. If you hit the save button 10 times in a day, that, that number's going to jump up uh, quite a bit. And we'll have a lot of files in here every time you hit the save button. So you can save to the cloud and then we can manually choose. Uh, when to publish this and you can compare versions you can download all versions you can make all versions through versions and stuff like that but we're going to always say that so let's make ourselves a new package so i'm going to switch back to the design collaboration we've been working on this model for a week and we're ready to share the changes that we we've made here open the swim lanes and let's switch back to being the structures team we're going to make a new package. So I'm going to click on a little plus button on our right hand side of the swim lane here. I'm going to add in our latest uh, structured model. Let's save that to the package. And we're now ready to share our package. So I'm going to hit the share button here. Let's give it a new name uh, Structures uh, 14 December uh, V2. Uh, yeah. um, We'll skip the description for this one and just hit the share button. There we go. That's our package created and shared with all the teams for them to consume and use as they, they see fit. So now that we're done from the structure side of view and it's still processing, but it might finish if I might finish talking, I'm going to go back to the architectures team. And we're looking at today, and again, you can see the icons changed again. So there's, there's now a couple of packages in that one block at the moment on this timeline. I can see one's being consumed and one's not being consumed by the heart card icon there. If I click on that to kind of go into that package or group of packages, I can see the one that I've not consumed. I'm going to left click on that, and then I'm going to consume this. Might take a few seconds. It might not take a few seconds. That was nice and quick. But that will now take the latest structured model, put it into our consume folder, into the structures folder, and overwrite the one that was there. Again, I can access the previous version, so we've not lost the previous file, but we've now updated the, the architect model. If we just jump back into docs. Go back into our work in progress folder. We're back to being the architects again. So we're going to expand architecture. There's our consume folder in our structures folder. And we can see it's updated the file that's here. So this version number will go up by one and we'll have access to the, the latest changes that the structure team has shared with us. And we'll just give that a few seconds to, to process there. It was fairly fast the first time around that we did it. There we go, that's built. And we're now up to version uh, version two there. Okay, so that's everything we need to do um, on the construction part. So let's move that out of the way. We're back to being the architect. So let's open up our architecture project and see what's happened. So now we're going to the architect folder. We're going to open up our original uh, architecture project here. And what we should get, so long as everything goes uh, well, we are running live and things like to go wrong when we're live, we should get a prompt telling us that there's changes in the file. Now, I've not seen that, so I'm a little concerned here at the moment. Let's have a look. So we've not seen the latest changes there. That level's not gone up. Okay, let's come out of this. Uh, let's just publish this just to be safe. Okay, let's just have a look at the date stamp um, on these structured models. So, uh, again, let's remove architect folder, consume structures. I uh, did not synchronize yet. Okay, so in my desktop bit, I'm going a, a little slow there. Have I just linked in the the wrong one originally. I might have looked in the wrong one originally if it's not true. Yeah, have I gone straight into the uh, uh, structures folder now from, from here? Give yeah, that a refresh. Okay, let's have a look in our system tray, our desktop connector. 
pending tasks in queue. So it's just running a little slow by the look of it as well. Um, I can't remember which file I linked the first time. I thought I'd do the right side. Uh, that's an all file by the looks of it. So let's clear that action. Let's have a look um, at our docs folder from within Windows Explorer. And our collaboration project. Where the architects have our consume folder. You can see the structures folder. And we're looking at the version ones. It looks like it's just not synchronized down. Uh, yeah, we'll give that a refresh. But there we go, version two. Okay, so it looks like we're we're getting there. Well, let's just try all that again. We might have just been running a little a little too fast for anything to be synchronized, especially if you're my internet connection whilst uh, live streaming as well. So let's come all the way back out with this. Let's stop out, put back in. The files. Work in progress, or if you picture, consume, structures, not a refresh. Have we seen the file yet? No, we're not. Okay. So we are kind of running over slightly. We do have a, a rough 30 minute window that we try to aim for for these sessions. Uh, I'm just going to spend an extra five minutes um, on this. So we'll We'll just put the file to one side for now, and we'll have a look at uh, some locally saved files that I've got, just so I can show you what you should see. It's obviously running a little slow, but we are doing a lot of changes very quickly. So let's go and uh, open um, a new file. Let's go to my desktop and I kind of keep a saved copy of all our uh, sample Revit models that are installed. So where the architect, so there's the advanced sample model. There we go. And we're going to link in the structures model. There we go. Yep, that's not a problem. Go back into our south elevation view. Copy monitor. On the collaborate tab, stop the root file. And let's just stick with one of these for now. So let's uh, monitor the root level. And we'll make the change locally on my computer. It'll run a lot faster. We'll find it we've got. I'll also have to show you the clash detection as well, uh, but we might not have uh, time for that today. So let's monitor our roof with the structural roof. There we go. And save our architect model. And let's just save it on the same part. Uh, or not. Let's save that somewhere else. File. Save as. Um, let's stick on my desktop. I will just save it directly on the desktop. There we go. Save. Now. Let's just have a look at power. I think it's maybe they're really on the road. We're also going to have that problem as well. Now, it was on the desktop. Okay, let's give this a try. Second time looking at it. Let's open up the structural model. There we go, which is being monitored now by the architects. Well, let's change the elevation of the group. Yeah, we'll set that at 11, probably from just like what we did uh, a moment ago. A second for it to think about it. We're going to save this. You know, let me save up the same folder. No, okay, so we now have a, the one, wrong one link, and let's just save this in water. So again, a live broadcast we have to love this sort of stuff a bit. I guess you get to see that everything is not always uh, a perfect uh, workflow in uh, real life. So let's save this locally on our 
desktop as well. So we have the wrong one linked in the architect model, so we'll just have to do that um, again in a second. There we go. So let's just change that back to uh, uh, 11,400. We can now have a copy of both those files on my desktop, which shouldn't be read only because we've saved those new files from within Revit. Okay, if I go back to the architect's model, that structure is that's architect. And we'll remove that link file and we'll link in the one that's now on the desktop. Well, let's just go up and manage. And we will go to our links there to model. Let's unload that in the project. So let's just remove it out of Let's get rid of it all together. There we go. Let's go back to insert link brevets. Return back to our desktop. Let's let the structures model. We're going to copy monitor. Monitor. Camera root. Um, Scriptures root. Save that. Close the project. See how fast we can, we can do this. Reopen the architects. Uh, we open the structured model. Adjust the elevation of the roof. We're going to get experts on how to adjust elevation of the levels by the end of this. Let's have a think about it for a few seconds. We'll save the change. And back to being the architects, and we should now get prompted that the structural model we've got linked in has changed. There we go. We got there in the end. Okay, so we get this message telling us that there's an instance of a linked file that needs us to review uh, what's going on there regarding the coordination between the two projects. I'm going to click OK to this. I'm just going to make a mental note. There's something there that needs reviewing. And we're going to go and have a look at what needs reviewing. So if I go back to the collaborate tab, just to the right of the copy monitor button, we've got coordination review. I can select the linked file I want to review, in this case, the structure model. And we get this window here that's going to organize um, all the issues of coordination between the two um, two files. I can see there's currently a new and unresolved issue. And under that, there's going to list all the new unresolved issues. In this case, we only have one, which relates to the level. It's regarding maintaining its position. And you can see that the level has moved by 100 millimeters. I can expand it further and I can see the two levels involved uh, between the two files. And I can choose to make a decision. In the actions column, I can postpone making a decision today. I can reject, I can accept that there's going to be a difference. To, Keep maintaining a, a monitor between the two, or I can update my model so that my level will move uh, by 100 millimeters as well. I'm going to select move uh, level root and just simply hit the OK button, and we should see the level in the background automatically update. Thinking about it. Still thinking about it. There we go. And that's now updated to match. So anything you need to monitor between two files, you can you can monitor pretty much any two elements. They don't have to be the same type of element. You have a pipe running along a wall. You might monitor your pipe and monitor the wall in the linked file. That way, should that wall ever move, you know that you need to adjust your pipe work so it still runs along that wall. It's not just floating in the middle of the room. So any two elements um, pretty much can be monitored. They don't have to be the same type of element and they don't have to be in the same location. 
if your level is 100 millimeters above somebody else's level, to any particular level even, then you can still monitor that and maintain that difference between the two levels. So that was fun. It wouldn't have been a live broadcast without something not quite working right there. Again, we were getting the, um, the construction file to, to do quite a lot there and, and read it within a very short uh, window. We were just running a little faster than uh, what my computer um, wanted to do there. So we have run over by 10 minutes. I apologize about that. This is the last episode of our Santa series. Uh, we will be running more um, live broadcasts in the new year. It is almost Christmas, so Merry Christmas to, to everybody as well. So uh, do jump onto the Man Machine website. We do list all the, the webinars and live broadcasts that you can uh, register uh, onto on our home screen on Man and Machine Product UK. Again, check out the YouTube channel as well. Lots of videos on there. We've got a couple of all our live broadcasts uh, from this series and other series. And with all sorts of useful tips and tricks and tutorials and, and stuff on there as well. Again, thank you all um, and have a wonderful Christmas. That's goodbye from me. Bye.